<clears throat> for the record, this is what I mean when I say big fly, right? Not everybody has the same definition, but this is a 10 weight with not a big fly, even though this is a four and a half inch bait fish pattern, which some people might call big, but it's certainly not big, especially for 10. This is a 12 inch beast fly, right? This is a big fly. <laughs> What's going on everybody, Gunner here. Uh, today we have another video featuring a signature fly from Rio Flies. This happens to be Bramer's finger mullet. Check it out. Now if you've followed me for a while, uh, the finger mullet might not be a very familiar name, uh, but this fly should be recognizable because it's formerly known as the Slow Jig Clouser. Uh, that's a fly I designed years back, uh, and it took inspiration from Bob Clauser's Clauser Minnow and modified that into a 360 degree bulkhead shape and silhouette. <laughs> and so, I don't know why, but nobody can understand why I called it that because they look nothing alike. I was just trying to give proper credit to the fact that it, that's where the inspiration came from. So it's rebranded as the finger mullet uh, to be less confusing uh, for everybody. And it's a really cool, simple fly. Now, first and foremost, it's designed silhouette first. That's the whole point of it. Taking things like clousers, taking things like bend backs, taking things like classic hair wings and putting a nice blunt face on it, 360 degree silhouette. And then of course, when you cover small lead eyes and a big bushy head like strong fuzzy fiber, it has a very slow jig to it. That's kind of the whole point. But it's this bulkhead silhouette and this kind of like all purpose four and a half inch bait fish profile that just make it a, a fly that hunts literally anywhere. Now secondly, the thing I had in mind for this fly is actually distance casting. It's designed not to foul. So you have a silhouette based pattern that's designed to be able to cast a long way without the tail wrapping, without wings wrapping, without things getting caught on each other or caught on the hook bend or caught on your leader. Everything is designed for castability so that every cast fishes. This is not a bass fly, not even close. This is an all-purpose saltwater fly, juvenile tarpon fly, redfish fly. This is a, a Brazilian Amazon peacock bass fly. And in fact, that was part of the inspiration and, and one of the design considerations when submitting it with Rio, it was like, 2018, I went uh, to Brazil with Nomadic Waters, and on day two, I got to fish with a guy named Rodrigo and our trip host, Danny. And Rodrigo, he had us in this side channel, much like this. It was about this wide, uh, and it was connecting a lake to the main channel of the Amazon. And the fish use it like a highway. They go in and out of those lakes all the time. And so Rodrigo had us posted up kind of on this little deep bank in this channel. And we fished it and fished it and fished it and fresh fish just kept coming in. But they started getting a little bit smaller. We had a small school of uh, butterflies and a small school of pocket come in. And I mean, Danny and I were putting up some numbers. And so I put on the slow jig clouser, I put on the finger mullet, and I fished it for the entire night because I needed something that could drop, but I wanted that full profile, 360 degree blunt face silhouette of a bulkhead. I needed it to drop next to the bank, and I didn't need something huge. Now, by the end of the night, I think me and Danny put 72 fish on the board, if, if my memory serves me correct, but we actually, we absolutely crushed it, and that was all on the finger mullets. So I knew when I was submitting this to Rio, I was like, this cannot only be bass. Like, I understand that like, I might only be able to promote it that way. That's what I have access to. That's how I can market it. But this is not a bass fly. A four inch, four and a half inch finger mullet shaped fly. That is salt water. That is big game. That is jungle. And it all depends on what hook you put it on. We decided to go with the A-Rex 220 salt water hook. I believe it's a size one, uh, but it fits the pattern, the proportions everything perfectly and it gives you a very stout strong wire hook to be able to fish this pattern for smallmouth bass snook stripers juvenile tarpon uh bluefish like it literally doesn't matter bring it down to the jungle fish it in brazil fish it for peacocks <clears throat> for the record this is what i mean when i say big fly right not everybody has the same definition but this is a 10 weight with not a big fly even though this is a four and a half inch bait fish pattern which some people might call big but it's certainly not big especially for 10. this is a 
12 inch beast fly, right? This is a big fly. <laughs> this is shooting head fly line territory. This is spay taper fly line territory. Now, something I want to talk about is the fact that this fly has small lead eyes on it. They're about 0.6 grams. It's not a lot of weight, uh, but what's really fun is it makes it accessible for floating line use in shallow water fisheries, right? So you can fish this in a, you know, a shallow water safe fishing situation on a floating line because of the small lead eyes. The small lead eyes also help it cast. It casts like a dart. They're not overly heavy. It does ride slightly on the heavier side than perfectly weight balanced, but that's because of the fox brush. Um, but it's a very nice casting pattern for the size. Uh, and the thing that is worth knowing about that and understanding is those lead eyes are going to cause the head to dip. It's a slow jig. Remember, it comes from the slow jig Clouser uh, original fly. And that is something you can choose or choose not. And what I want to talk about is a simple not choice because I have this rigged currently with a non-slip loop, a Homer Rhodes non-slip loop. And so this hook eye fitting is loose. You can see my leader bouncing all over the place. So when that hits the water, I have this very loose connection on the nose of that fly so those lead eyes can drop straight down. So I can get kind of a slow jig, flutter, darting, bait fish action. Now, if you were in a situation where you wanted that to suspend, you wanted that to drop slower, you wanted that to ride more level on the pause, it's not a matter of having options necessarily without lead eyes, but you can simply change your knot by tying something that's a friction fit knot tight to the eye, like a uni or an improved clinch or a palomar, whatever you want to do, but those knots cinch down. And now that hook eye has friction on the nose of it, and instead of being able to turn and drop, it has to kind of bend your leader, it has to flex your leader material. So then you can control drop rate by how basically the thickness of your leader material, whether that you want to have it drop faster, you can drop down to like 10 pound, you want it slower, you can keep it at 20. Uh, and then you also have the stiffness choice of that mono or fluorocarbon, right? You can have like power flex tippet or you can have stiffer saltwater tippet. So understand that the knot choice has a pretty significant interplay in how the fly behaves and what you want it to accomplish. So <clears throat> that is the Finger Mullet from Rio's Signature Fly Tying Collection. I hope you'll check them out and give them a try. Finger mullet. Down the hatch, man. Small break from the scheduled programming. We gotta try to catch a muskie. Probably a sturgeon, don't worry. and the right angle to see that muskie jump out of the water and try to eat that. It wasn't a very big muskie, which is why I'm not freaking out. 